excited to tell you about today's project. Um, well, it's actually not today's project. It's going to be probably a couple of weeks uh, before it is completely done, but I will have to work on it a little bit pretty much every day um, in order to get it uh, finished. I know, you're dying. I, the anticipation is killing you, let me tell you. I am going to make some barn quilts. They are like wooden outdoor pictures, um, which are traditionally hung on the side of barns. I am going to be hanging ours on the front of our very plain, unadorned pole barn. And I'm gonna make it beautiful and I'm so excited. Okay, let me show you what we're doing. Right here, I have two um, pieces of pine board that I got. Um, they, uh, when I put them together, which is my project for this morning, um, I'm gonna glue them together so that they make a 36 by 36 square. So here they are, two boards, and I am going to glue them together right there. Now I have them balanced right now. Can you see that those are some old table legs that I have? So they're balancing up on the old table legs and that is so if I get some glue drippage, um, it just drips down and it doesn't actually glue my fancy um, barn quilt to my workbench. So um, definitely don't wanna do that. And so for this purpose, I have purchased the wood glue which um, they tell me is so strong that the wood will break before the wood glue does. At least that's what the guy at the store said. Before I actually get started gluing, I have to scrape this sticker off that is stuck on the edge. This is, uh, I suppose, some sort of guard to keep it safe, but they used this glue that doesn't come off. Like, who, what? people. What, what do they think? They think we're gonna want this uh, UPC code stuck on there for all eternity? No, we do not. This does not seem to be working well. It could be because this razor blade that's in here is like older than me. So that could be the problem. But I've got my boards all cleaned up. It's time to position them. So what I'm looking for here is I wanna make sure that my seam is going to be nice and tight all the way across. So I flipped these boards around a couple of times, this way and that way, and you know, which one first. And I think I'm gonna get the tightest seal here. So this is what I'm going to go with. Now, if you were doing something um, fancier, well, not a if you were gonna do something different than me, um, then you would even perhaps care about how your grain looked when you were um, deciding which pieces went where. Um, I don't have to worry about that because I'm just gonna paint this whole thing. So I'm not gonna be able to see the wood grain anyway. But, um, but this would be the time to care about those sort of things before you have like some big knot that looks like an eyeball staring at you every time you look at your picture. That, uh, that would be creepy and would not make me happy. Um, so if you are not gonna paint your boards like I am, I suggest you keep an eye out for those eyeballs. I'm gonna apply the glue to both edges. And I'm just gonna try to spread it out. It's okay with me if there's gonna be a little squeeze out because I will clean that up and I do wanna make sure that there's a nice tight seal. Then I will put this board into position, pushing it right up against my workroom wall there. And that'll be part of the pressure that holds them together. And then I will treat this side. Does anybody else have trouble trusting Elmer's glue? Like, <laughs> you know, it was so really unsatisfying when you were a kid and you had to glue anything with Elmer's glue because you knew it wasn't gonna last. And so when the guy hands me Elmer's yesterday in the store, I'm like, 
Really? Elmer's? That's what we're going to go with? Okay, so now I have those two together and I'm just going to squeeze them. Now, if I had a better setup here, I would have a clamp for these two things. I'm going to brace it with something here. All right, well, we have our boards glued together and we're now ready to take the next step. And this is the part I've been so excited about. We actually get to start making something beautiful. So let me tell you what I did. I um, am terrible at picking colors. I'm just like, I know what I like, but it's hard for me to create from nothing. So um, perhaps you are also um, color challenged. Um, the first thing that I did was I downloaded this um, app that helped me like pick colors on my phone and I quickly got overwhelmed. So I closed that and I went to the store. I wound up at Lowe's because Lowe's had these nice little booklets. This is a Valspar booklet and I opened it up. They had maybe I don't know, 20 different ones, but I opened one up until I saw one of the colors that uh, was pretty close to what was in my head. And that is this um, color right here. It's kind of like a, um, I've been calling it maroon, but um, I don't know, maybe a burnt red, I, some sort of hot pepper color, cayenne-ish. I don't know. This one is called Savannah Red. Um, and once I found that color, then I looked to see if I liked the rest of the colors on the palette. And Steve and I had kind of talked about a few colors. So I knew I wanted some sort of green maybe, and I knew I wanted some sort of blue perhaps. Um, but I wasn't exactly clear in my head what I was going to go with. So finding a color palette with a little bit of green and a little bit of blue, I was like, sold. I am going to work with this color palette. And that allowed me to simply look away from all the other options. Because if I keep looking at all those other options, then I am paralyzed with indecision. So now, decision making. Okay, so... Armed with my color palette, I start walking down the rows of what type of paint to get. And I know I want exterior grade paint because this is going outside. Um, and I know that my first uh, layer that I put down, I know that it needs to be um, uh, some sort of primer. So like a primer with a color mixed in would be primo. So. I'm walking down the things and I'm adding up how much all this is gonna cost, right? Because each time you change colors, you know, you can add another big chunk of change onto your project. You guys are not gonna believe what I found. They had a small but powerful section of a shelf with clearance items. So this is a gallon of paint it was uh, retailed for $34.98. It was marked down to eight, and then it was marked down again to five. So I got two gallons of the white color that was selected here on my palette. Again, I'm not looking at all the other white options. I just know I need a white. This is the one that some expert says goes with all these colors. So, ba boom, there I am. Okay, so. I am thrilled because I bought two gallons of this stuff, so I just saved myself about 70 bucks. Then you guys are not gonna believe what I found. Look at this. I found a whole display. It wasn't a big display, granted, there were 10 of them, but they are quart size, um, exterior paint plus a primer still, so, you know, uh, I guess it has all that weatherproofing stuff mixed right in. But this quart is marked down to $1. Holy 
guacamole, Batman. I am so excited. I buy them all. That's right. I was originally going to go and I was going to get three colors. One, two, three, right? I was going to get a red, a green, and some sort of blue. But because these were on clearance, I was like, this is a once in a lifetime. So I bought them all, which made me really happy that I had selected this palette because it was a lot easier for me to decide what other colors I was going to have mixed up that day. So I got a whole bunch of colors, which, um, which I will now be able to use in all of my different things. So, um, I was really happy that I came across this. I was really happy that I used a palette picker. And I am also really happy that I had some idea of what all three of my quilts were going to look like. Um, so that when I was frantically trying to buy, find 10 colors, I sort of knew what I was looking for. So anyway, that is my story. This is like the success of the century. If this entire project looks heinous and ugly, I am only out $8 for all of this different paint, which just thrills me. Okay, no, that's not true. $10, $10 plus another $10 for the um, underlayment. So 20 bucks. I have spent $20 in paint. That's such a good feeling. Mm. Okay, let's get started painting. So while I was at the store, I just invested in these foam brushes. Um, this will allow me to put on my paint. Um, I bought enough foam brushes, one for each color. So I will not have to uh, do very much cleaning up. I will use these. And then when I'm done with them, I will throw them away. And that also makes me happy because I think the more we can do to eliminate the really hateful parts of painting projects, the better off we are. So that is a look at coat number one. So this is after drying. I'm so happy to see this. I have this, this streak here that doesn't seem to want to cover up. I don't know what that's about. It's probably moisture. And then I'm so glad to see this still being relatively flat because I noticed that it was starting to cup a little bit, um, you know, this way. Uh, yesterday when I was putting on the third coat of paint and um, in my um, mind's eye last night while I was lying in bed, I imagined it being, you know, unusable. This is totally usable. Um, what I am going to do though, even though it kills me because I want to get onto the fun stuff, is I'm going to paint the opposite side of the board um, so that it doesn't continue to cup. The, um, the warping of it is caused by moisture and uh, yeah, a coat of paint should fix that. Okay, so we're finally ready for the fun part. So I have here a um, T-square, and I am going to use this to mark uh, my grid on my um, board. And I know um, from all the many um, sample designs that I worked on, that I want a three by three grid. So that's gonna give me nine squares to work in. So this is supposed to be a 36 inch board, and it is, whew. And so I'm going to want to divide that into three um, even pieces. So I'm gonna want a line at the 12 inch mark and a line at the 24 inch mark. Um, so I will just uh, do that. Here's my 12 inch mark, and here's my 24 inch mark. Now, I'm using pencil, uh, which hopefully will be, um, you know, dark enough for me to see, but not too dark. Um, I am gonna want all of the pencil lines to disappear, so I'm going to try to draw lightly, 
and um, and anything that doesn't get automatically covered up with the paint, I will either erase or cover over again. So um, that is what I'm doing with that. There you go, looks pretty good. So now what I have is some frog tape and I am going to use this to tape off some of my squares. To dry I thought I would tell you a couple of things first this first coat I tried to put on pretty lightly so I did not get full coverage um, but I didn't want to have goopy um, paint 
along my tape edges because I'm trying to prevent a lot of bleed over underneath the tape. Now, I did buy frog tape and the green tape is definitely better than the blue tape. We all know that. Um, so hopefully I won't get too much bleed over. I was, I was very happy with the green. The green did not bleed at all. So, um, so I don't know, fingers crossed. Um, so anyway, so the first coat, very light. Then after that sets and the seal is made between the tape and the other paint, um, you know, I can, I can be more heavy handed with the second coat. Second thing that I wanted to point out is that um, the only reason that I am able to do this uh, without making a lot of additional measurements and drawing additional lines is because I practiced so much. Um, and I just practiced on graph paper um, so that I knew in my head what my design was. And with the exception of a few extra berries, I did add a few extra berries, um, I am sticking with my design. I am not calling audibles here because, um, you know, half the audibles don't look good. And so um, now is not the time to mess around with it. If I wanted to uh, experiment, I should have been experimenting on graph paper, not here. It's really looking good though, don't you think? I'm so happy. Okay, so this is how it's looking so far, which I'm pretty happy with. But when you come up super close, there's a couple things I want to fix. Look, and I got a little red dot there. And then over here, you see that my green and my red don't exactly touch. Um, and that is, oh, and I got a little, I got a little missing red section there in that corner. Um, so I'm going to pull out a tiny paintbrush and a little bit of red paint and I'm going to fix it.
I said that I didn't want to veer from my plan. I didn't want to call any audibles halfway through here because I should have done all that experimenting when I was working with my graph paper. Yeah, so uh, I threw that plan right out the window. So what happened is, is I was, I was planning on this gray color to be my last color. And I put on my first coat of that. And I was looking at this center area and I thought, you know, it just needs a little something. And I considered a whole bunch of things. Um, but I decided that uh, I would put a strip of the gray inside the green. Um, so that is what I decided to do. So I hope it looks good. I did not ever practice with that design, so hopefully it doesn't stink. Um, so now uh, I have the second coat on these corners. I have to wait for that to dry, and I have the first coat on my little strip, so I have to wait for that to dry. Then I'll come back, I'll put a second coat on here. I'll check to see if I need any more coverage here. The gray, um, uh, I went lighter on even the second coat because I don't want it dripping all down the sides of the frame. Um, so I'll, I'll check. I might put on a third coat here at the same time I put on a second coat here. But um, in any event, I'm back to waiting, which is really not my strength. But I really hope it's going to be worth it. I, I think it is. We'll see. So we're getting really close to being done. I definitely have some cleanup to do. You see, I have a little gray splotch right there. And I have a couple little gray splotches right there. And then I still have those pencil marks. And I think since I'm gonna have to pull out the white anyhow, I think I'm going to um, just paint over those pencil marks. And then here, I really like how my design turned out, except in some of the places, it got a little shaggy. So I'm gonna see if I can't um, fix that. Um, yeah, so that's my plan there. Um, all right, so that's the next step.